Ah, the peaceful Elysian field of dreams. It sucks so much I am going insane. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. Let me, let me, let me walk you down the little garden path I've been on over here in the frickin' spirit world. Okay, so, so, I, I told you that there's, there's metal underground, right? Well, that's true. And hey, there's even, it even provides you with grout you can dig up so you have a path right away to Tinker's Smelteries. You think that'll be easy, right? Well, 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 well. See, the thing is, if I can, if I can get down here and I can find some, with, with flint, you can, you can pick up copper ore just fine, but you can't pick up iron ore. And yeah, there's, there's even little packets of nether stuff, although all I have found is nether quartz. Anyway, anyway, you can't pick up iron. Copper is really all you can get, and you, you don't really have any means of melting down copper to make a pickaxe to advance. So, so, all this, all this grout you dig up is kind of sitting there being useless. So, so what I did, what I did is <laughs> I, I poked myself back to reality, and then I farmed up a bunch of ingredients, and I went back to these old repeatable quests back in what the world is made out of. And, you know, I, I turned those in, and I didn't I didn't just claim the reward right, right away. I, I made a bunch more brews of sleeping, and I traversed back and forth between the real world and the... Oh, it's a nightmare. And the frickin' spirit realm. Yeah, 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 you're not scary. Go away. Anyway, and then I could turn it in in the spirit world, and I would get myself a supply of essence, right? Well, and I used that to, to get myself this supply of iron seeds, right? We'll just deal with him. And, and using those iron seeds, I made myself an iron-capped wand, and... I, I made myself a Thawncraft Crucible, and using that, I made myself Void Steel, using, using, using Cracked Sand for the Darkness, the Tenebri Essentia, and, and uh, just Bowls for the Vacuous, and World Anchors for, for the Alley. And there's there's a thing about the spirit world, you see. Uh, Endermen don't spawn here. So in order to get these mana pearls that I needed, you you take wispy essence and you throw it into here now. Let's let's get out of this. You you uh, mana pearl. You can get it just by throwing this wispy cotton into a into a mana pool, right? So I was able to make the, the runic altar and all that, and I was able to make world anchors, and I was able to make void steel, and that gave me Mendelian level mining. So now it's going to be easy, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you see, the next thing that we're going to need... Okay, let me let me show you what we're, what we're doing here. We are... We're making a brew of flowing spirit, right? Spirit. Making this blue this brew of flowing spirit. But for that we need we need a kettle and we are gonna need this fanciful thread from a spinning wheel. And for both of those we are going to need these attuned stones, right? And for that, we're going to need dragonstone, and for that we need a piece of terra steel to make the Alfheim portal, right? Well, to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate, we are going to need one of each rune, including these fire runes, and for that, we need a piece of nether wart. And as far as I can tell, even with the the little bits of, of nether stuff spawning in the mining underground, there is no nether wart anywhere. So, so to get wart, I would have to, I would have to, I would have to use a blaze rod in this alchemy catalyst, which is also going to require two more blaze rods for these, for these brewing stands, right? Well, <laughs> I can get blaze essence to make the blaze rod from my quest book, right? I can, I can do this repeatable quest, and that's going to require so much bullshit that I just, you know, jump back and forth between reality to do that, right? But, see, the thing is, that quest has a five Minecraft...
spool down. It takes like it, this. This took hours, so I had I had time. I had time to to think and and to hate. Time to hate so much. So I decided I wouldn't use that blaze rod for for a alchemy catalyst and another wart. I would use it to break the freaking spirit world over my knee. So what I did is, back here in reality, I took this huge supply of pumpkins I had, and I had I had auto assemblers on it, turning it into pumpkin seeds, and I put it into this matter condenser to make a singularity. I poked a hole in reality with pumpkin seeds, and I took that singularity and I I, I, I blinked it up with some ender pearl power powder to, and and then I blew it up with with DNA or with with TNT. <laughs> to to make these quantum entangled singularities, right? <clears throat> and meanwhile, I was I was farming up more and more and more of that blaze essence slowly, one at a time with about an hour of waiting between each one and bringing it back to the spirit world. And while that was happening, that was a crash. Yeah, and then there's the crashes which which happened like a third of the time whenever I change realms and 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 like sometimes I have to boot the game four or five times before it'll actually work and like half the time I get a nightmare anyway and I have to switch back again and and oh so much hate so much hate so so while I was farming the these blaze essences what I did is I went diving for pearl oysters because even though Endermen don't spawn, you remember that pearl oysters sometimes give you an Ender Pearl? Yeah. Well, well, I, I, my goal was to get sixteen of them and then set up a farm. But the sixteenth one that I got, that had an Ender Pearl already in it. So, so, I used that and the Blaze Powder to make an Ender Eye. And then I used a Miracle Trivat to make up some obsidian, and I got myself these. And, well, you see, the thing is, these work in the spirit realm, so now I have it loaded up with all of this. <laughs> yes, all of this glorious bullshit <laughs> to counteract the rest of the bullshit. So, 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 I just, I just need to, I just need to take these and, and put them in, in a pattern like this, and, and then put the, put that in there, and then I just need to, <laughs> I just need to give it power, and then I can, oh, then I can do this. <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Suck it, spirit realm. <laughs> Suck it down. <sighs> So that's how my journey into the spirit realm went. <laughs> I kind of punched a hole in reality to get internet access back. Which is what happens. That's that's what you get when you mess with me like this. <sighs> okay, so... <laughs> so let's just get the rest of our terminals up and going. Yes, as, as you can tell, this quantum ring, uh, it... It allows you to send channels across space and dimensions. The, the downside, of course, is you need that massive amount of any one type of item. It could be cobblestone, it could be anything. You need to send all that into the matter compactor and sacrifice them to make the singularity. And, if I can just make myself a, uh, a network tool. And the other thing is... They are massive power hogs. Yeah. Um, I'd estimate that each of these is costing about a thousand RF per tick on its own, and 
you need at least two of them for it to be useful. So, so it's a good thing we that gas burning generator is way overpowered. Anyway, now that I have this, I can more or less just set up everything I'm going to need. I'm going to need a small altar just to provide altar power for everything that I'm going to need. And I'm going to um I'm going to need to set up some devices and stuff like that. But that is all stuff you've seen me do before. I just I just wanted to to show you the 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 thing I've been through in abridged form. Okay, here we go. Got a small little altar set up. Just a couple thousand points. Got my kettle. Got my ingredients. Doop, 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 doop. Look at that. It's all fancy. Brews of flowing spirit. These things, you throw them and they create a special liquid, I think. Let's see here. Yeah, look at that. It's 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 green. Yeah, gives you a regen effect when you're standing in it. That's neat. Hmm. No oh, right, no water. Anyway, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of these, and uh, and yeah, that's the quest done. Let's see. Can I find what else that might have unlocked? Yeah, it's probably stuff in changes. This magic mirror stuff and all that. Okay. While we're in the habit of fixing abject failures, I realized what I did wrong. It was not Orbis Terai. Orbis Terai is not one of the elements it wants. It's Potentia that it wanted instead. The only excuse I have is... That in Blightfall, I used a ritual that requires Terai and Orbis Terai in order to mine up minerals. It's a it's a quarrying ritual, and um, and I got used to making batches of Terai and Orbis Terai at the same time. So that that's my only excuse for that abject failure. Anyway, I have I have the blood network fully charged from all that time, and this time I even used the segmenter to program in all the relays. So, uh, yeah. Let's see, Magicalis was the first one I bound, so it should be going first. No? Okay, which one's going? There it's going. It's going with Infernus first, I guess. Yeah, you see, at the rate that it's draining, this is actually going to take a while. This is... this is dramatic. It takes quite a while, actually. It'd be cool if this maybe, like, summoned a monster that you had to kill before... before the time was up. Because this takes a good three or four minutes. That's enough time for a boss battle. There we go. There's the ether going. Oh shoot! I forgot the sacrificial dagger. Well, let's let's let this finish. And once it finishes, it should be in a stable state where I can leave it and go and get some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Oh, it's blinking. That may be that. That I'm not sure if that's good or bad. That's all the salts. Yeah. See, the Master Ritual Stone now says that it's an active convocation of the damned. And all the salts are spent. So what I need to do next is I need to put the Blood Altar on top of the ritual. And I'm just going to build a fence around it to trap the demon in there. That should do it. That's why I chose a shade, because it can't fly. And anyway, I need something called a, da a, a uh, Dagger of Sacrifice or whatever. And I forgot to bring that with me. So hopefully it'll stay stable while I teleport 
back home. I should have drawn up a checklist. If this if this stops the ritual, then I will be so mad at myself. Okay. Okay. So I need to plonk the demon down onto the altar, and then... Oh, look at that! Demon portal! Yes! Yes! Okay, give it space, give it space. <laughs> Demon portal! This thing... Okay. So see these roads coming out of it? This thing is going to gradually start building a village. Yeah. A special demon village. And it's going to spawn a bunch of demons that I have to fight. And they're going to drop crystals that I need. And it's going to be full of dungeon loot, and it generally looks pretty darn cool. It's going to take a little while to build up, though. So I'm just going to, like, I don't know, get a little bit away. Because I think, like, it only does it when you're not watching. And I'm just going to idle for a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, there's... There's a building. There's a building. Oh, come on. Where's the entrance to this? Anyway, the bigger... Oh, there we are. Oh, these are demon grunts. These are, these are low-tier guys. Get out of here, scrub. And yet, he dropped some life shards. I'm going to need those, and I'm going to need soul shards in order to get these crystal clusters. And I'm going to need tons of them. But yeah, this place is loaded up with, with like, with like, loot. <laughs> oh man! Hey, Mother of Dragon Scroll, neat. Oh, I am so, so relieved that the ritual worked this time. Anyway, yeah, over time, this village should be spawning more and more buildings and the more buildings that spawn the faster the demons spawn and eventually like it's just going to be a constant flood of demons and you notice that the path is oh, oh look at that he's shot a thing that shot me into the air whoa <laughs> oh you are strong do you lift Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. I guess these must be wind elemental demons. Yeah, you get a certain type of element depending on the biome that you put the... that you put the ritual in. Oh, nice, it drops steel stuff that I could melt down. Anyway, I think that I could stop the the village from growing by destroying this demon portal, but I'm not going to do that. Heck, um... <laughs> that's... It was so much trouble just getting this place going. And it's not even grown a little bit yet. And anyway, I think that when I'm away from it, it will not grow, unless I chunk load it. Ooh... <laughs> I'm Batman. Hmm. I probably shouldn't put that on. Oh, hello. Go away. But yeah, the one ring made with fire. Hmm. Okay, why not? Just... Just, just for a minute. N no? Okay, maybe I need to... Huh. Maybe it's a specialist slot? Oh, come on. Don't tease me like that. Whoa. Whoa, what? Oh. Oh, okay. Everything kind of has a has a tone to it. Huh.
<laughs> Cute. The Fresh Prince? Ooh. Go away! I'm looting! Do you mind? The Fresh Prince, huh? No effect. I'll stick with Batman. So I've never seen this before. Yeah, after... I, I've been I've been farming this area for a little bit, and you can see that the town has built itself up quite big. Although the demons don't seem to be really spawning any faster. Oh. Hey, look at that. But yeah, after a little while, the, the demon portal, um... Changed. The block itself is still there, and it's still spawning buildings. I just saw a new one. There's there's this thing in here, but yeah. I think that uh, my well of sac my well of suffering might not be properly loaded. I've not been really gaining any blood. But I just saw that is a building that hasn't spawned before. So maybe by the demon portal upgrading itself, I'm getting new buildings. Look at this, it's made out of nice stone bricks and a yeah, schematic saver again. That's weird. But yeah. Anyway, I have a good deal of supplies on hand now, and I think I have enough to do... Yes. Make these crystal clusters. Gonna need at least five of them. And let's just do this by equal trade. Nice, right, so and let me put my blood pendant back on. Was doing that just to get some more demon spawning, or at least not to interfere with it. You see that I've completely pimped out the altar except for a couple of speed runes. And I think this is about as fast as it can go without runes of displacement. So let's just... A boop, a boop, a zoop, and a zop. And now, the final altar upgrade. Yes. Okay, let's get the rest of the runes of sacrifice and let's see how cool we can make this. I think I've maxed it. Nope, nope, nope. It reached zero. It reached zero for just a second there. But realistically, that's probably about as fast as I can get it without adding some runes of displacement. Yep, you see the blood is building up now. Okay, let's add a few more, just because the thing I'm going to do is going to suck down blood fast. Okay, and next, just going to let that sit there for a little while because I have a bit of blood built up. And going to put in the crystal cluster. Yeah, look at that go. You know what that means? More runes of sacrifice. I think I should be able to equal trade these without resetting the progress. Mm hmm. Screw it, do the whole thing. <laughs> yes! All the pointy arrows. Ooh. The transcendent blood orb.
Really? I thought that would be the secret to the research for the Eldritch Blood Orb. Oh well. Yeah, see? Yeah, I was right to fill the whole thing out with sacrifice, because that actually drinks blood much faster, too. And that is going to store a ridiculous amount of blood. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's another blood orb that I have to scan. Let's try the Master, let's try the Archmage, let's try the Magician. No, I think it makes a dong noise when you make... when you find a secret to research. And I did not hear a dong. Yeah, it should be under Apocrypha, and this is kind of the blood magic section. So maybe I need to make something in here to unlock that. I don't know. Maybe I need to make and scan a rapier of the sticks. Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, I don't think I'll need the Eldritch Blood Orb. The, the Transcendent should hold, should hold more than enough. And that is blood magic kind of finished for now. The only thing I could think of that I would want to do is... There is a couple of blood magic potions that I could make, and I could try for the Omega Ritual, which will make my bound armor even more ridiculously powerful. But that's about that. And of course there is actual blood magic spells, which is kind of what I want all this blood storage for, because they are quite expensive. Anyway. How about today let's do some Thomcraft quests? It's been a while. Oh yes, um, the life of the world. Once I went to the spirit world, I got the remaining couple of quests. I need to uh, make these wormwood seeds, which require a bit of wispy cotton sitting nearby in order for them to spawn. They're a simple crossbreed. Let's see if it happened. Nope, hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's, it's just a cross of wheat and snow bell on soil with wispy cotton nearby. So it's just a matter of rolling the dice on that until it happens. Got the wispy cotton sitting right there. And that wither witch one, um, or, or that coven witch one, in order to create the spawn coven witch egg, I'm going to need a cobalite ingot. And the Jimmy Project has not yielded fruit yet. So, let's... Oh yes, that witch request. Turn that in. Oh, I'm so glad that's done. Let's look at these Thomcraft quests. Uh, it wants me to make a Crucible of Souls. I already made an alchemic boiler. A crucible of souls melts down monsters. Like, I think you have to lure them on top of it. Wants me to make a thomium-embossed silverwood scepter. Okay. Ah, nard node jarring. Node jarring is quite interesting, actually. This is the way that you move nodes around... Be if if you don't have teleposers to do it, because teleposers can move nodes very, very easily. But, let's see here. Let's look across. I should have some good ones in the nether. Yeah, Ignis 45, and in the overworld, best Ignis is that. Yeah, let's get this good Ignis 45 one. So I'm just going to hop into the nether real quick. Because I am going to want an Ignis node to soup up my steel production when I get around to automating that. I like how the nether is literally no threat at all now. Okay, here is that lovely, lovely node. So I'm going to need to clear out some space around it. Because I'm going to need to first surround it with glass on all sides. Oops. 
Then you put on a layer of slabs. Can be any wood. And you see how it kind of looks like a gigantic jar? Well, with quite a lot of magic, actually, you can make that happen. And now you got node in a jar. Bunk. E. Mm hmm. And as I thought, it wants me to make the things that we might use a node with next. So let's just clear that arrow out and let's get back to the base. We are running a bit hotter on the gas burning generator, but it's still not at its max burn rate of, of 50 per tick, so... And the rest of the generation is keeping up without a single speed upgrade. So we are nowhere even close to tapping out even a portion of the potential power gen. So having a node in a jar is one thing, it's all nice and lovely, but... And, and and you could you could do that. You could bring a bunch of nodes from around the world and you could pile them up as close as you can without them devouring each other and you can use them to recharge your wands if you don't have a lovely mana charging wand. But there are ways to pack them even closer. We can make this node stabilizer. You see it's just a bunch of relatively simple ingredients. Yes, there we are. And this will prevent nodes from feeding on whatever node is held in this thing. It's kind of a force shield. It actually looks pretty neat, but I imagine that's not the end of the quest. Yes, it wants me to make the transducer as well. So let's see what that's going to take. It's going to take another node stabilizer, because yes, we are going to need to stabilize the node while it's being transduced. And essentially a bunch of redstone. Okay. There we are, node transducer. And note how these things are kind of facing towards each other. It kind of indicates how they're meant to be used together. Hmm. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna need is a block of redstone. And is that the quest? No, it wants me to also make a V-Relay. That's really, really easy. Those are like wires, so they're super cheap. It's just a couple iron and some balanced shards. I think I can remember that. Just like, it's something like... Uh, okay. Ah, it's on all four sides, of course. There we are. And that should be the quest. Yep. Bunch of stabilizers and nodes. Might get something good out of all that. So, here we are next to our steel plant. Because I am going to use this node for something. You see, when you take a node and you put it... Well, first of all, let's put it in our stabilizer here. And you see I just have to take my wand and right-click it to clunk. And there we go, the node is out. And do note that you can damage nodes this way. Like you can turn them from normal to fading, or they can become pale, or they can lose a little bit of V aspect. So you don't want to move nodes around unless you have to, and you want to use teleposers for the most part. But yes, you see it forms this lovely little force shield bubble over it. It looks very neat. But that is just sitting there. And I think actually the the stabilizer might slow down its recharge rate a little bit. So what we want to do is we want to take our transducer on it. And what this is going to do is this is going to tear open the node into the realm of magic just a little bit bigger. And it's going to transform it into this kind of, from this kind of magic battery into a thing that streams out magic at a more consistent but slower rate. So we just need to give that a redstone signal. Redstone block is usually what you want to use. And oh, yes, tearing open a hole in reality. Note that it drained out all the V. And this node is sitting here and it's just kind of, yep. Yeah, it's not supposed to take this long. 
There it goes. Now then, note that it says Aqua 3 Ignis 6. This isn't how much it's storing. This is how much it's outputting. Because you see how it's all like sparkly and electrically? Yeah. If I put a V relay out, I now have little magic laser beams that shoot magical power around. So, if I were to take some iron and load up my bloomeries here so that they start putting into this infernal blast furnace, which is going to take a moment. There it goes. Oh, it doesn't even need the V relay. It's just close enough to do it on its own. You see those little red sparks coming out of the node? That is Ignis V streaming out of the Ignis node and into the Infernal Blast Furnace and making it smelt faster. And I believe that these Infernal Blast Furnaces, yes, I made a ton of steel. I believe that they only consume one Ignis V each, so I could have up to six furnaces powered off this one node. And it would be pretty darn neat. Maybe I should put a melding mirror here. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. And the more important thing you can do with these is there is a special hookup you can make, which I'll probably actually have a quest for. Yeah, this V charge relay, you can hook that up to a to a arcane work table, arcane workbench, and that will recharge a wand using V lasers. Of course, that would mean that I would need to find a node with all the aspects on it. And okay. If, if you have a node with a complex aspect in it, like uh, this node here, that has that has that weather aspect there, that's, that's made of aqua and air, that will break down into roughly equal parts. So this will have, like, um, just from what it has, it'll have, like, three points of aqua, three points of air, maybe four points of ordo, and then that 26 weather will break down and it'll give me maybe another point of air and aqua, right? So we need to find a node that has, even just in complex aspect form, all five aspects in it if we want to make a good wand recharging node to transduce. And that is what you want to feed up an uber node for. So we are actually going to look at doing that because I might as well do it properly, even if I'm using my mana system to recharge my wand. Um... Because actually, I have a quest to make a Thalmy Embossed Scepter, which is, if anything, even more efficient. And I might just use that. And also, I'm going to want it for souping up uh, Wand Foci. So, I'm going to be looking into something interesting that I saw in Gatomancy. I'm going to be looking into this Node Manipulator. It's a really complex infusion, as you can see. It's going to require this wand recharge pedestal, which is like it 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 uh, also recharges wands with V lasers. Um, it's just a single unit to do just that. Anyway, this thing supposedly, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to have to do all that, and I'm going to have to set up a multi block. But supposedly, this thing will randomized a it, it will randomize a node so that it has a new thing on it like you know how some nodes are pale and some nodes are fading and stuff like that it'll randomize those aspects of it and it can have a couple of interesting extra ones so i'm just going to build that out and i'll be right back Actually, I can't do that yet, because I'm going to need this ancient stone. So, I cannot quite do that just yet. Yes, yeah, so let's at least make this V-charge relay. It's a relatively simple thing. Yes, yeah, so it's just two great wood rods, a V-relay, and some iron. So we're going to need some great wood.
just like so. Yep. You see, relatively simple craft. And all you need to do is just put that right on top. And then if I find a way to get a decent, uh, a decent energized node with all of the aspects, it will just shoot lasers into this and recharge whatever wand is sitting in there. Ah, wants me to make a sinister note in a jar. This must be the quest line to get into the Eldritch Dimension. Which is what I would need to do to get that ancient stone. Okay, let's do that. Let us go to the Eldritch Dimension today. So, sinister note in a jar. That was actually a special bit of research that I think was made just for this pack. Ah, there it is, under Artifice. Yes, you see it's going to require quite a lot of ominous-looking stuff. These obsidian totems and obsidian tiles. Which are easy to make, thankfully. So that's just going to take a minute. Between cuts there, I sort of ran out of storage space, and I realized that I was getting low on processors. So I decided to finally make that, um, that crystal growth accelerator automation I told you about. I decided it's just 300 RF per tick. I'm not going to make some sort of sensor for determining when it's in use. I'm just going to leave it on. So it's a very simple automation. It's just this floating hopper hawk on the interface here, and you see these item frames with the output items here, so it only picks those up. And I found that putting the interface directly on the open crate here would only feed it like one or two items at a time very, very slowly. And you see here I have all my water bath items. I have uh, regular Fluix, which is the fastest, and I'll just show it to you. It's just going to put them on in there, and we'll see that yeah, it should start crafting very shortly. Yes, there it went. It would, well, I wasn't looking and I was checking on it. But yes, it also does uh, regular and fluix purification. And it has all the auto crafting for the seeds and the powders and all that. Oh yes, and I also increased the automation of the spaghetti machine. Down under the ground here, I have an interface. If I can get my eyes on it. I have an interface here that's doing the stocking trick. I found I had to use logistical sorters, otherwise it would only try and pull the first slot. But one side is sending sand to this crusher, the other is keeping these thermionics all stocked. So now all I need is to figure out a way to automate the, the diamond, quartz, and gold chipsets, and I can put another interface right here and I'll be able to bulk order processors. I have here... A new thing that I've never played with before, and I hope I have enough essentia. If not, it's not a huge deal. But yes, from what I understand, this thing should allow me to generate knowledge fragments. I don't think I truly need them, but it's it might be nice to have them. Ah yes, these, these zombie brains that are very nice are uh, also an infusion. It's a normal rotted zombie brain, a potion of weakness, a golden apple, and a bucket of water. So it's kind of doing the villager purification ritual just as an infusion with a zombie brain. Yes, the think tank. Oh, lovely name. Let's put that on down over here. And it has this interface where... Ooh. It's... It's gaspy. Oh, okay. To construct a working think tank, you must place the think tank on top of a bookshelf with nothing in a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube around it. Okay. This should do. Think tank. Books. Ah! 
That's interesting. Okay, and it looks like it doesn't do every book, so it's just a chance. But yes, so long as I keep this thing supplied with books, I have an infinite source of knowledge fragments now. Neat. Oh, I remember why I wanted to get a source of knowledge fragments. Because they're one of the ingredients for this infusion for a sinister lodestone. Which, I mean, I'm not going to need too many of, but it's, you know, it's nice to know that I can make them anytime. And that's one of the ingredients for making a sinister node. Yeah, I've got all the ingredients assembled here for Sinister Node. It's just essentially some obsidian that's really just treated with Essentia in the uh, alchemical thing. And uh, yeah. Probably the hardest thing to assemble was that Lodestone and also a Brain into the Jar, which is a similar level of infusion. Oh yeah, so note that the main item in here is a node in a jar. It's just a random node that I went out and grabbed. I think it can be any type of node. Ooh. Sinister and pale. 666. <laughs> Cute. But yeah. Excellent. Oh, gives me a couple more. Next it wants me to make an Eldritch Obelisk Placer. This is a special, another special recipe that's just in this pack, which is weird because there is actually a way to play to get a portal from Gadamancy too. But um, oh well. Ah, oh, yes, it would probably be under Eldritch, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay, that's a void metal block. A couple more obsidian. Oh dear. I shouldn't have thrown out that Crimson Rites book. I'm gonna need a couple of them. Well, you've seen me make that before, and this is just going to be... It's going to be a little bit of grinding work. A one fancy book. A two fancy books. Crap ton of void metal. Oh yeah, it's all assembled. Look at that, just in stability eight. Weak sauce. Come on, you could at least give me a ten here. <sighs> Out of Tenebrae again. It's a good thing this cracked sand provides it. I mean, I can get it from obsidian and other things I can craft too, but... Ooh. Creative mode only, huh? Well, not anymore. <laughs> it even has a sent you. Oh dear. Well, oh, now it wants the four Eldritch Eyes. I think I should have those. Yes, I have exactly four. Mm. And now I... Note, leave a large distance between constructing multiple Eldritch Obelisks. You will be deposited in the Void. If they're too close together, you have been warned. Okay. Well, that's nice. So, we're just going to need all that and let's get a little bit away from the base because sinister nodes also terraform the land into a sinister biome they also summon furious zombies not too far away close enough that we can still find it but still this looks like a nice flat little bit of land uh boop what? I... I kept it? I can place these things forever? Neat! But yeah, uh, these things are where you normally find the Crimson Cult guys. Like, these things in a normal world, they spawn every so often, and you'll find them, like, standing around in a circle and worshipping these things. Anyway, it just needs the sinister node sitting in it right there. A boop. 
And then we place the four eyes These eyes are a high-level infusion, and they drop from Eldritch Guardians. Okay. Then, should be able to just... Oh, oh that's... That's a rare warp effect. Um, we, get, uh, we get this lovely vision for a while, and also the sun will occasionally set me on fire. Welp. Nope. Sneak. No? There we go. That is a portal to the Eldritch Plane. Now, the Eldritch Plane is a massive labyrinth, so I'm going to prepare some specialist equipment for this. Ooh, listen to that. The first tool I'd like to make is this Mana Blaster. This thing allows me to spend a little bit of mana in my inventory to make a Mana Burst. Now, on its own, that's not that useful, but I can combine it with lenses just like any other mana spreader. In particular, I want the mana lens of Flash. This will place a torch. Essentially, a fancy, shiny mana torch. So I will have a means of making markers and lighting the path as I go. Next up, I'd like to get a supply of food that I can access from anywhere. So what I'm going to do here is I made myself a couple magic mirrors. I'm going to place one down, have the other one named, link to it. Then I'm going to place a hopper on it. And I'm going to link that into the drawer net containing my magical food. Okay. Hello? Controller sleeve. Oh shoot, it's on the redstone signal. I need a I need a door I need a drawer trim. One sec. Yes, you see that's a really quick and easy fix. Mirror. Relink it. Draw trim. Copper and controller slave. Yes, there you see it's building up a nice supply of food in there. And now, if I place down this mirror somewhere, let's just get a little bit of a distance away. Yes, it spits out food at me. And because this area is chunk loaded, that will work across dimensions. So now I have my food supply sorted. And let's see, infinite source of markers, infinite source of food. I don't think there's anything else I particularly want because I also have the means of getting rid of items. Yeah, I think I might be sorted. Okay. And yes, of course I have an infinite source of magic because again the the mana gen is chunk loaded and I have my mirror so oh. yes and we get some new friends showing up around the portal oh ominous oh would you you're ruining the moment Ah, uh, yeah. I can't. I can't pontificate around this thing. I'm just gonna have to jump in, which we are going to do next time on regrow. Get, get away. Go away. Next time on regrowth.